to Matthew chapter number 13. <clears throat> we are in the midst of the studying parables, parables of Jesus. And so Matthew chapter number 13, we are going to finish up the, this chapter of kingdom parables. Looking forward to this. We're going to be in Matthew chapter 13, verses 44 through 50. That's where we're going to be at tonight. I know at one point we did an entire uh, Bible study on one psalm or, or one proverb. Then the next one was one and one pro parable. And then another one was two. Now I know I'm going to stretch this. We're going to do three par uh, parables for tonight. So, but they all connect to each other with a specific word. Notice with me in verse number 44 through 50 what it says. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field, the which when a man hath found, he hideth, and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man, seeking goodly perils, or pearls, who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind, which when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but cast the bad away. So shall it be at the last, the end of the world, the angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just, and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Let's ask the Lord's blessing on our Bible study tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for gr granting us the ability to read and to read your word. And Father, we thank you so much for the miracle it is to see, the miracle to see physically, but also spiritually. And Father, we ask you through the Holy Spirit tonight to help us, remind us of some precious truths. And Father, may you help us to be loving you, as the song says, all that, that thrills my soul is Jesus. May that be our heart's intent. And may you bless the study tonight, I do pray. In Jesus' name, amen. <coughs> What is the first thing that comes to mind when you hear the word treasure? Okay, first thing that comes to mind, Laz, is treasure. Good. Uh, <laughs> that's, pretty, that's pretty simple. So, yes, Judah. Okay, so pirate treasure. Um, <laughs> every day for the last, like, like, four days, we have been watching Paw Patrol, and there's a pirate a pirate kid in the midst of it. And what really bugs me about this pirate that he steals the things for his treasure, uh, but never anything bad happens to him. Like he gets arrested and puts in jail. No, you don't get any of that in Paw Patrol. You just get him. He, he's like, oh, okay, I'll just, I'll learn better next time. Yeah, I'm sure he will. Um, I saw a hand over here. Yes, Jason. King, okay, yeah. Treasure, ha kings have treasures. Value. Yeah, much value. Yes, Amy. Family, yeah, yeah. Timo. Money, yeah. Lots well, interesting, good choices. Yes, Ezekiel. The Bible, yes, absolutely. Boy, you're, our, our study's done now. Let's go ahead and uh, dismiss in prayer. This is great, uh, <laughs> but praise the Lord. Treasure, yes, treasure is interesting. A lot of times we think of treasure, and I think of a noun. I can ask the question this way, what is your treasure? And you can say family, you could say the Bible, you could say you know, money, if you're really interested in money. Yeah, people say these things. Um, what their treasure is, uh, it really depends about different things that they own. I'm sure that there are little kids with certain toys that is their treasure, uh, for instance, one of our kids has a special blanket. Actually, just about all of them have their special blankets. And so these blankets are the ones that if they 
suddenly disappear, guess what we're going to be doing the rest of that night? We're going to be looking all over the house until we find that blankie. One time we were over at the Bernal's house and we forgot one of their blankies there. And so uh, I think it was Laura that drove all the way back to their house, got it and came back with the crying child there and back. So, <clears throat> so yes, we, we a lot of treasures as possibility, the noun of treasure. But then think about this, a treasure it could be in the verb tense, meaning, what do you treasure? What do you treasure? It's a little bit different. And there's a little bit more of a delight, more of a, a desire for these things. What do you treasure? And the thing that I want to focus on tonight, specifically what we need to treasure, is that of God and his kingdom. We're going to see... Uh, three different reasons why Ghana and his kingdom we should treasure. And by the end of tonight, I pray that each one of us has a more of appreciation and would treasure God and his kingdom more and more. So first of all, we're going to see in the text, number one, the first reason why God and his kingdom we should treasure, number one, is because of the priceless intrinsic value. The priceless intrinsic value. Now, what I mean by intrinsic value is the value of something just all by itself. For instance, all of us have vehicles that we drive. I'm, well, not the kids, of course. <laughs> not yet. We've got some time. So, But uh, every one of us drives a vehicle, and guess what? There is a, a way to find out the intrinsic value for that car. You get a, well, what's called Kelly's Blue Book. It tells you how much your car is actually worth. And then you go on and, and see, you know, different things about whether or not to get it fixed or to get it replaced or, or whatever have you. But the priceless intrinsic value is the actual value of something. So here we're going to see the kingdom of God as a couple different things. And each one are quite priceless. Notice with me what it says. Verse 44, it says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field. Treasure hid in a field. You might ask the question, is there ever a case where people find buried treasure? And apparently, yes. Now, I'm going to say these things. Now, don't you, ha you know, go out of your way tonight to go ahead and get a metal detector and, and uh, go to your property that you own. Because, uh, number one, we're in Florida. It can only go down so so much uh, before you hit water. Uh, but think about it. It's, it probably won't work here in Florida, but other places it, it does. And in fact, it did. In England, uh, in 1840, somebody was doing excavation on a certain area in England and was digging, digging, digging. Then all of a sudden he found a buried treasure, buried by the Vikings, evidently landed on England and buried some of their treasure there. And it was worth uh, $3.2 million, it was estimated as. Then another one, I, I love this one. Uh, there's this farmer that, he's of course in England, and he, he was hammering something, then all of a sudden he lost his hammer into his field and he couldn't find it. So what he did, he got a friend's um, metal detector, and it was going through, then all of a sudden, well, he didn't find his hammer for a long time, but he found something else. He found buried treasure that was worth $3.8 million. And in fact, it's amazing things that these people come up with. And then he actually did find his hammer. And, and the hammer, as well as the treasure, is in the British Museum of History. And so it's interesting about this. Um, another one that was uh, found in 1985 in an old building in a Polish town, the the they, they knocked the building down and found $120 million worth of silver and gold within this building. The more they dig, the more they got. So, interesting. And the biggest treasure that was ever found like that was found in Afghanistan. And this 20,000 pieces of gold, all these different gold things, and I have a photo up here of the things that they found, some, just some of the things. Sorry for you that are listening by internet. 
<clears throat> so we have up here all these different things of gold and precious things that were found uh, in this uh, buried treasure. You know, th this actually is in uh, Afghanistan and it actually keeps on getting stolen. Uh, so and then recovered, stolen and recovered. So it has an interesting, interesting um, uh, history to that. But think about it. Treasure in the backyard. People have have these metal detectors and they want to find the buried treasure. They want to get rich by just happening upon a field. And that's what it's like here in verse 44. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field. There's intrinsic value to this treasure. Notice with me in verse number 45 now. And something else that's like it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking, seeking goodly pearls, who when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all he had and bought it. It's a pearl of great price. Now, I looked up what is the largest pearl that somebody has found. And it's called the Pearl of Puerto Rico. Or, yeah. This thing is huge. It is 75 pounds, and it's worth over $100 million. Has intrinsic value because it's a large pearl. So that's the largest one. In fact, the guy that found it hid it underneath his bed for about 10 years without telling anybody. <laughs> oh, I thought, oh my, that, that's pretty incredible. But it's something that has intrinsic value. You think about different things in the world that has intrinsic value. God and his kingdom is of great price. That's what the, the parable is getting at is how great the price is for this pearl or for this treasure. It's immensely more so when it comes to God and his kingdom. Think about it this way, that of human life. Human life is of priceless, intrinsic value. I remembered a song when uh, I was a kid. I, you know, my, uh, one of my family members gave us a, a cassette tape of uh, the Olsen twins when they made some music songs. Now, this goes way back. And so one of their songs I remembered while I was doing this study, and it's Brothers, or was it, um, Our Brother is for Sale. Okay, they're all, only 50 cents, and they go on with the song, My Brother's for Sale, and then it goes on and on and on. And then at the end, they regret offering him and said, no, no, our brother is not for sale and all that. Uh, probably got more than 50 cents for him. So, <laughs> But yeah, think about it. Human life, it has intrinsic value. It's priceless, and so that's the reason why murder is a huge deal. That's the reason why what shocks our nation is when there is a school shooting, like last week. All right. Human life has a priceless value. Why does it have priceless value? From the point of conception all the way to the end of one's life, priceless is a human life. But why? It's because we have the image of God. God says back in the days of Noah that if somebody takes a life of someone that bears the image of God, they are not only fighting against that person, but they are killing the image of God. And because of that, they should be killed, executed themselves. Life for life. So we think about this. <clears throat> if the image of God that we have is priceless, has intrinsic value, how much more than God himself? He is of utmost priceless treasure, him and his kingdom. So first of all, we see the priceless intrinsic value. Number two, we see the priceless comparative value. Priceless comparative value. What I mean by that is that you see one thing is greater in value than another. For instance, let me ask you this question. How about uh, a comparing two different types of cars? One is a $625,000 Ferrari, 
The other one is a 20,000 Dodge Dart. Which one has greater value? The Ferrari, yes. Except for when you see a video like I saw yesterday where the $625,000 Ferrari decided to plow into three parked cars. Uh, yeah, that wasn't a happy scene at that point. So I, then at that point, the value goes up for the dirt. So, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> it's interesting. So priceless comparative value. One thing is of greater value than another. And we're going to see everything in our life compared to that of God and his kingdom is so, so less in value than God and his kingdom alone. Notice with me what it says, 44, verse 44. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a uh, until treasure hid in the field, the which when a man fa hath found, he hideth, and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. So here's what happened. This guy finds a treasure in the midst of a field, and he says, you know what, I, I want this treasure, therefore I'm going to buy the whole field. Goes home, see how much money he has, gets all of his money together, goes to whoever owns the field and says, I want to buy your field. Here's all my money that I have. Okay, here's the deed. Okay, thank you. Goes and once again, that treasure's there. Why did he do that? Because the treasure is more valuable than all of what he had. That's the reason why he did that. Then also... Verse 45, again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly uh, pearls, who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. So once again, he says, okay, this pearl is of such treasure to me, such pricelessness to me, that I am willing to take all of my earthly goods, sell everything that I have in order to buy this pearl. Pearl. I thought of it this way. Pretend I like going to garage sales. I say pretend because I don't. <laughs> Some people do. Some people have a thrill about going to garage sales. That's that's fine. That's 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 a hobby. That's good. Um, but I don't. I. But then one day I go. I go to somebody's garage sale and I don't know this person. And so I look around. Then all of a sudden I see, I see a violin sitting there. Okay, hey, look at this violin. Huh? Open the case. Oh, oh. And I realized that that violin is a Stradivarius violin that's worth $2 million. And they are. They're worth 2 to $10 million, depending on who's going to buy it. And in an auction, it goes way high. And so I thought to myself, this is a Stradivarius violin. I got to get this violin because that is a huge investment. So whatever it takes, I'm going to get this violin. So I go to the person and say, yeah, I'll, I'll take this, uh, this old violin from you. I'll, you know, I'll pay $100. Somebody over here is, oh, I'll pay you $200. No, no, $500. Oh, $600. Okay, $1,000, $2,000, $5,000, $10,000. Then I get everything in my bank account out and say, I want to buy this violin with everything I, I own. My wife doesn't like it, but I, <laughs> I put down everything that we have in our bank account. And I said, I want to buy this violin. Is that a good trade? Yes, if it is, in fact, a Stradivarius violin. Because then I put it into auction. The world finds out, oh, the lost Strad, Strad is found at the auction. And then it goes up to $20 million. Right there, I have a huge increase. Huge investment, but it pays off. Here, God and his kingdom, whatever we need to give up, it's of little value compared to the kingdom of God. Whatever we have, whether it be for when it, if God calls us to the mission field, we give, us, give up a luxury life here in America to go somewhere where we are not liked, we are not wanted, and some people want us dead. But we say it is more valuable, the kingdom of God is more valuable than my comfort, more valuable than my possessions, more valuable than my car, 
more valuable than my house, more valuable than even spending time with my grandkids or whatever. The kingdom of God is of more value than anything on this life because it's a priceless thing. It's priceless in intrinsic value, number one. Number two, it's priceless in comparative value, number two. But number three, it's priceless in eternal value. It's priceless in eternal value. Now, notice with me, we only went through the first two parables. The last parable in this section is in verse 47. It says, again, the kingdom of, of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind, which when it was full, they drew to the shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but cast the bad away. So you have this illustration of, okay, you got, have fishermen. And who is he speaking to? He's speaking to his disciples. Some of them are fishermen. You see Peter and Andrew, James and John, they were fishermen. So they knew right off the bat what he's talking about. So back in those days, they had these nets. And they had weights on these nets. And all they had to do is take it and throw it on the side of their vessel. And it would sink down a little bit. And it's attached to a rope. So they, then they would pull it shut and then yank it onto the, on board. And whatever they get from that throw is what they catch. Now, remember the many times that uh, Peter didn't catch anything all night. Then Jesus says the word, and okay, it's filled. Uh, but here the illustration is, okay, when you throw your nets in, you catch whatever you catch. Let me ask you this question. Uh, what other thing could you catch if you go fishing besides fish? A boot. That's what, the first thing that came to my mind, too, Norman. Yes, Drea. Yep, some, some garbage. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, prepare our waters for that. Yep. An octopus. <laughs> oh, my. A jellyfish here in Florida. Oh, my. That would be bad. Uh, <laughs> So you think about the things that you could get if you fish this way. Everything, we have good fish over here, but yet now there's intermingled with all this debris, all this junk, all, and some of them are just bad fish. They're dying fish. They're dead fish. Yeah. Ezekiel. A shark. Well, that's a fish that you can't eat. So <laughs> there you go. There you go. At least the Bible says don't eat it. So in the, in the law, it says don't eat a shark. So. Uh, interesting. But yet, think about it this way. So he gives this illustration and he talks about the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net and then you get all that which you cast. One goes into vessels. The other is cast. The, the other one is cast away. The bad is cast away. Notice with me in verse 49. Now Jesus actually interprets what he just said. So shall it be at the end of the world. The angels shall come forth and severed the wicked from among the just, and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. So here we see the kingdom of heaven has eternal value. It's priceless because it has eternal value. Those who do not receive Christ as their own personal Savior, what they get is an eternity of torment. Eternity of gnashing of teeth. That doesn't sound good. Like anytime I bite down too hard on my on my teeth itself, it just ah, that's painful. But to gnash on your teeth, that's that's not good. Wailing in utter darkness in a flame that will never be quenched. A worm with you that dieth not. In the lake of fire. Eternal value. Is the kingdom of heaven. Because for us it's quite the opposite. We get to go to a place of eternal joy. Fullness of joys in the presence of God. I love the very fact that in the Bible. As I'm doing my Bible reading. It kind of hits me when I'm reading it. And it says various things about. God rejoicing over his people. I thought, huh, I don't really picture God in heaven saying, praise me for what you did. 
Yeah, just kind of, okay. Praise the Lord because of my goodness. Praise the Lord for how, how good the people are doing and how God's going to bless them. He rejoices over his people because he wants to give good things to his people. And so it's an amazing thing. God overjoys when a sinner comes to Christ. That's what the whole parables of the lost coin, the lost sheep, and the lost son is all about. That very fact that God has joy when a sinner gets right with him. We have such amazing things to look forward to. Eternal life with Christ. Eternal life in the new Jerusalem. Eternal life on a new earth, an earth that's not polluted by sin, not polluted by, by well, garbage, not, not polluted in any way. It's perfect. And a universe that is in sync with what God is doing and just showing the glory of God emanating through that of the new Jerusalem. Amazing. It has eternal value. But think about this. We hear about, okay, the kingdom of, of God has intrinsic value, has a comparative value, has priceless eternal value. But uh, for us today, do we treasure God and his kingdom? Do we enjoy the time that we can spend with God himself each day in prayer and, and Bible reading? Are we willing to give everything up so that the kingdom of God is proclaimed and advanced? These are good questions to ponder about. Are we willing to lay down our life and surrender to God and His will so that God's kingdom can go forward? Do we count all things as loss compared to the riches that Christ has for us? There's so much there. It's of so much precious and priceless value the kingdom of God is. And the more and more we put our lives saying, I'm going to do all I can for what God wants me to do and do all I can to, to focus and to show people Christ and to be what I ought to be before the people so that my light does shine before the darkness and in the lives of people so that they can too know how to get to heaven, how to enjoy that the endless joy, the endless perfection that God has for us in the future. The more and more we do that, the more and more we can say, I treasure God and his kingdom. So these are just things I want us to think about throughout uh, this next week as we go from day to day. Do we treasure God and his kingdom? Now I'm going to stop there and if there's anybody that has a comment or a question or anything that you want to add to this, I definitely have this time for that. Then we'll go to our prayer request.